Welcome to labmits.com. In this video, we will look at how to configure NAT64 and NAT46 with object NAT on a Cisco ASA to allow communication between IPv6 and IPv4 networks. We will be covering stateless NAT46 and NAT64, stateful NAT64, including static and dynamic NAT and PAT, DNS64, and finally stateful NAT46. For our lab topology, we have an ASA firewall running version 911 and the router R2 and R3. And on the left-hand side of the ASA, we have an IPv6 network with the VLAN 123 that is connecting the firewall 1 to R3. And on the right-hand side, we have the IPv4 network and VLAN 12 that connects firewall 1 to R2. And we also have a Windows 2008 DNS server, the IP of .32 as well. On R3, we have three loopback interfaces, loopback 1 through 3, that we'll be using as our source IPv6 network. And on R2, we also have loopback 0 and 1 that we will be using to simulate our IPv4 network. We have a span session set up to monitor the inside and the outside of the ASA so we can monitor to see how the packets gets translated as it gets through the ASA. On the top here we have the list of network address translation that we'll be performing in this lab both for stateless and stateful NAT 46 and 64 and we will come back and revisit each of these when we get to the corresponding task. And I just want to make a note here that all of the configuration that will be completed in this lab will be done using object NAT. So with the task number one, stateless NAT46 and NAT64, we need to configure NAT on firewall one and any necessary static routes to allow R3 loopback one to communicate with any IPv4 addresses on the outside. So that R3 loopback one shows up or appears as 3303 and any IPv4 address appears to R3 with the prefix 20122 and then followed by the actual IP address v4. We are allowed to only configure two sets of object NAT and then we need to verify that our stateless NAT configuration works correctly by changing the loopback 1 on R3 to a different IP. And that should continue to work without modifying any of the NAT configuration. Let's get on to the firewall 1 and verify connectivity here on the firewall 1 that it can reach both R3 and R2. So let's do a quick ping from firewall 1 to 2001. 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 3. Okay, so that's pingable, and let's try to ping the R2 on the outside, which is 172.16.12.2, and that is pingable as well. So let's first complete the routing on R3 and R2. You can see for R3 to reach R2, it needs to know how to get there. So let's configure a default route on R3, and that would be IPv6 route, the default, which is colon colon slash zero, pointing towards firewall 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, and then let's go ahead and enable debug IPv6 ICMP just to get ready. And on R2, R2 needs to point back towards firewall 1 for the IPs that we'll be seeing it's coming from. So here, just fast forward to the what we're going to be translating to from v6 to v4. We're going to be using a subnet starting with 3.3. .3. So in R2, Let's configure a default route with 3300 slash 16 pointing back to firewall 1. 1612.1 and also let's enable IP ICMP debug. Okay, now for the routing on the firewall itself, the firewall needs to know how to get to the R3 loopback address and the R2 loopback addresses. So firewall 1, it would be let's do IPv6 route. Point to the inside and this is insight to R3 loopback addresses and all of the R3 loopback address or subnet starts with 2013 and then let's do slash 62 and that should include all three of the slash 64 subnet. And then pointing towards R3, 1, 2, 3, 3. And then we need to do IPv4 route outside to the R2 loopback addresses 1621602255255255 and then next top 1612.2 and we're just going to modify this is for loopback 1 we just did loopback 0 so 11121 right here 11121 enter okay so all of the routing is now in place so let's first take care of the stateless NAT64 and this is translating the IPv6 
of our three loopback one subnet slash 64. Here we are going to assume that we're going to translate only the last octet of the IP and that's the between 00, 0 through FF or 0 through 255. So only the first 256 IPs. Obviously if your subnet is larger than that then you can increase the size of your prefix accordingly but here we're just going to do to the corresponding slash 24. That means on the IPv6 side it's going to be slash 120. With the stateless NAT64 you can see here there will be a direct mapping between the last octet of the v6 to v4. Okay, let's, let's do that first. So stateless NAT64 using object NAT. So first we have to define the IPv6 address space that we want to translate to. So that would be, let's call it 3300 since we're going to be doing slash 24. We'll do underscore 24 in the name and then for the subnet it will be 3300 Okay, now we get into another object network and this is going to be for mapping to. So we're going to call it map 3300 and then defining the source subnet for us is the IPv6 subnet of our 3 loopback 1 which is 2001 3 slash 120. Just make sure that the size of the subnet is matching between v6 and v4. And then we'll do NAT inside, outside. So directions, do a source net direction inside to outside. Static because it's a one-to-one -one NAT. And then we need to define the name of the object which we just created right here. And then let's ends with DNS as well. So question mark, you can see there's an option for DNS. Okay, so that is the source. NAT translation, now for the destination, which in this case is NAT46. The idea is the same where there's going to be embedded IP address in the IPv6 space that will get translated and the firewall will know exactly what IP is to be translated to based on that embedded IPv4 address, which is the last 32 bits or last four octets of the IPv6 address. And we're going to make sure that our prefix for IPv6 is slash 96. And here's the example. If we're going to map to loopback 1, which is 1121, the IPv6 version of that will be 2122, which is our chosen prefix, and then ends with the embed IP v4 address in the hexadecimal format which is 101 201 slash 96. Okay so according to the task this will be our second set of object now because we just did the first set for the source now we're going to do the translation for the destination. Now on the firewall one the command is object network then we're going to map to 2001 22 so source subnet, now we're going to do mapping off outside to inside. So according to the diagram, before with the source, we're going from left to right. But now we're going to do destination, we're going to do right to left. So the subnet of the source becomes pretty much anything because we are covering the whole IPv4 address space, which is 32 bits. So net direction outside to inside against to static. And we're going to map it to, if you question mark, there's an option to enter IPv6 prefix. Since we're going to be doing the whole 32-bit address space, we have to make sure the length of the prefix match that. So in that case, it will be slash 96. And we're just going to end with, with the NS option as well. Okay, now if we do show NAT, we see that here we have two sets of object NAT. Okay, now on the, from router 3, Let's do a quick test. So we're going to ping. So let's try to ping looking at the our example right here. Let's try to ping our R2 loopback 0. Actually before we do that let me start the Wireshark. So we can see how the address the packets gets translated. Okay Wireshark. And it will the capture. And then from R3 let's ping 2001. 22 which is our prefix. And then our embedded IP address, AC for 172, 10 for 16, and then 02, which is just 2, sourcing from loopback 1. You can see we have a successful ping. 
And on the outside, the R2 is seeing the packet is coming from 3303, and that's because the R3 loopback one ends with the last octet is 3, so the last octet gets mapped over, so it's become 3303. The same thing if you do a ping to 2001, 22, 101, 201, which is corresponding to the R2 loopback one. IP address, sourcing from loopback one again. You can see here the source is coming from 3303 and the destination is 1121. Okay, now let's take a look at our wash art capture. So stop that, scroll up, look at the first sets of pings. So right here the source is coming from 2133, which is our three loopback one, going towards 2122 AC102. Okay, and that's entering the firewall. Now it's leaving the firewall, the source becomes 3303, and the destination has now become 172.16.02. Okay, and this is just the ICMP. Actually, let's look inside for the original request. Here it's uh, ICMP for version 6. So ICMP v6 with the type echo, and then it gets translated to the regular ICMP for IPv4 with type 8 echo. And then this is the return packet after it's leaving the firewall. And it, you can see it's an echo reply with the IPv6 source and destination. Okay, so now let's try to do telnet from R3. So telnet 2001 22 101 201 sourcing from loopback 1. Let's configure the line VTY real quick. Password Cisco login. So we can let R3 to telnet into R2 here. Now on the firewall with the telnet session, it's currently up. You can do show connection. You can see on the inside, it shows up as 2133, which is the real IP. And then on the outside is 2122.201.201, which is corresponding to the 1121 real IP for IPv4. We show that, you can see we have several untranslated hit and translated hit for, this is for the outside to inside. So net 46. And here's NAT64 for the inside outside. Now, if we do show xlate, you can see other than the two NAT statement that we configure, it contains no sessions or state whatsoever. So that's why it's called stateless NAT. And since the NAT is bi directional on R2, we should be able to ping back to 3303, sourcing from both loopback 0 and loopback 1. Okay, if you want to make sure it's unidirectional or the traffic can only be originated from the IPv6 side, you can either you know, put up a access list inbound to the firewall coming from the IPv4 or you can switch to the twice NAT, which we will look at in the next video. And since the twice NAT has the option for the unidirectional. Okay, now that we have both sets of our object NAT configured, now we're going to need to prove or we want to prove that the configuration for stateless NAT is working by changing the loopback IP to 2001.3.10 and make sure it's coming out as 3.3.0.16. Okay, now on the router R3, loopback 1. Let's do show run interface loopback 1. We need to make sure we manually remove this since if you go ahead and configure the new IP, it's just going to get added to the interface. So we need to make sure we manually remove this. And then we re-enter that with 10 at the end. And now if you're trying to ping, let me go up arrow right here. That's pinging the R2 loopback 1 interface. Now jumping over to R2, you can see now R2 seeing the source is coming from 33016. And that's because the IP that we gave to the R3 loopback interface ends with 10 in hexadecimal. And that's converted to 16 in decimal. Okay, and it's trying to ping the other loopback also, make sure it's still working. And here you can see it's hitting 172.16.02. Okay, proving in the other direction, pinging from R2 to 3.3.0.16, sourcing from loopback 0. You can see that is working as well. Okay, and it gets translated correctly to 2001.3.10. Okay, so let's change that back before we move on to our next task. 